what's the crack? This is Kieran. welcome to Spearhead Media. Today we're going to make a Savage Streetwear design and it's going to be based on arguably the greatest game of all time, Final Fantasy VII. So keep watching to learn a few tips and tricks and see how we get on. For now though, I'm off to Midgar. <laughs> What's the crack gang? Kieran here with another spearhead tutorial. So yeah, we're gonna jump into a nice streetwear design today. It's gonna to be simple enough, kind of photo bashing with a few 3D assets, uh, playing with typography and a couple of gradient maps and kind of textures here and there, you know. But you're gonna see this style all over Instagram. Let's face it, everybody in their granny has like a startup streetwear clothing brand um, on the Instagram anyway. So this is very common and it's kind of a nice little style to have in your arsenal. We're going to use some different grids and stuff to get our layout nicely kind of nailed down. A few gradient maps, bit of texture and cool uh, typography effects. And some nice assets from both Neostock and Envato Elements uh, as well as some of my own stuff. Which I've left in a folder in the description so give me an L like and subscribe for more free assets in uh, all my future tutorials. So yeah, without chatting too much more, we're just going to jump into this and uh, pay homage to possibly my favourite game of all time, Final Fantasy VII. Let's do it! And if you would like to further support the channel and help me help you make sick artwork, then you can go over to spearheadirl.com where you can get everything from Savage merch, Unreal typefaces and class assets to use in all of your projects going forward. So here we are in Photoshop and we've opened a new artboard that's the usual, A3 gonna shoot that up on screen there so you can see the dimensions and uh, basically I just inverted it made it black and I'm using a nice extended typeface called Mortend basically to kind of just like start hashing out the logo here for the top of our t-shirt I've used another nice font it's a bit more like old English and um, kind of like tattoo wear sort of vibe called South End and uh, I've basically made that black put it below my Final Fantasy layer and put like a small stroke on it of like 8 to 13 I think for this whole design my ho all my stroke weights are going to be like 8 to 13 on everything. So now I rasterize my Final Fantasy layer and uh, I basically make a selection of that layer, uh, make a new layer above it and then go to my gradient tool and just make a nice little like kind of metallic black and white gradient. I then put an inner white stroke on it and an outer black stroke on it just so it's kind of like broken up with the 7, the Roman numeral 7 below. I'm kind of playing with my shear here on the 7 trying to like kind of like uh, give it a little bit of oblique kind of feeling to kind of like juxtapose against the really solid flat Final Fantasy. I did change it by like minus 17 degrees and I wasn't really feeling it so then I just kind of go back in a bit and just go plus 17 or plus 15 degrees and uh, bring it back to normal because I think it, it does look cool the way it is. So yeah I basically just make like a frame uh, using my rectangle tool. We're going to use that as the like the main kind of like frame for the main artwork. Now I've got this cool like train um, 3D model of Envato Elements and I seen it and I just thought oh my god this looks exactly like the train in Final Fantasy or like some of the trains in the, the train graveyard in Final Fantasy so I was like I have to do something with this and then I seen the, the Buster Sword 3D model and was like okay it's meant to be. Here I have like a couple of different meteors and asteroid kind of like 3D models which I'm going in and playing with different blend modes like multiplying color burn and stuff just to kind of give it like a real kind of explodey fiery kind of like look kind of like the uh, the meteor on the original final fantasy 7 cover and anybody that's played the game will know that every all the imagery that i'm using here is like really involved within the actual game itself like the flowers there are like what basically what like uh, Aerith gives to cloud like pretty much at the start of the game now that i'm playing the, re the remake of the game it's just all flooding back to me so i'm using my spearhead font here uh, siege engine uh, to just put do recompense which is one of my favorite quotes from the game if you know it you know and uh, I basically type it out in one layer then I duplicate it mirror flip it vertically make that layer black and then put a white stroke internally on it just to kind of give it like that weird like mirror kind of effect now I've gone into uh, view and into new guides layout which is so so handy like you, if, if you're doing poster work you can really kind of like play around with different layouts and grid layouts it's kind of like what you're taught kind of 101 in college like in terms of like posting design and for this style of, of kind of busy more poster oriented style artwork um, your grid layout is, is super important and like you'll see here the, the negative space that we achieve using this grid like it's almost as important as like the typography or the, the imagery itself I really really recommend like you know working with grids for posters and stuff so as you can see I just made like four 
uh, columns with like a 250 pixel uh, margin on each side. I'm playing kind of loosely with this, you know, I'm basically using our grid for most things and then uh, also playing with like the internals of it so like kind of like a block and a half and kind of stuff like that so yeah once i've kind of like made my grid uh, i just start kind of like nudging things here and there and like basically making sure everything kind of fits nicely within their their assigned grids uh, as i did say like the negative space is super important and you're gonna see why once we get towards the end of this it's gonna look really cool uh, here i'm kind of playing with different kind of 3d models that like i thought some of them kind of looked a bit Final Fantasy, especially the, the clockwork kind of steampunky looking one. But then I, I think I opted just to get rid of them and just stick with the, the kind of see-through orb. So now you can see I kind of like brought the stroke down on my frame down to 13. I think, as I said, 13 and 8 are everything that I used. And now I'm taking my Neo Stock uh, energy effect and just putting it over the top of that orb and kind of color matching it a bit to make it look like uh, the piece of materia. And now I was inspired by a great YouTube channel called uh, Dread Labs. Really, really cool stuff. I'm so glad I found it. It's given me the inspiration to kind of like take my channel to really take it seriously. So uh, shout out to Tom from Dread Labs. But he has this really nice uh, Dread Labs uh, assets pack that you can get from his, his website, which I'll put on the screen now. Within that assets pack, it's got some kind of cool, nice marbling effects. And like, I haven't done this stuff since college, but it looks so cool. And it's really good for that kind of like asset graphic style poster kind of stuff. So I uh, use it as a background here. And now I'm taking another Envato uh, 3D model of just kind of like some kind of like scrap and rubbish and stuff. And uh, I'm using that duplicating it and kind of playing with the angles and like size and stuff merging them all to make like a nice scrap heap kind of backgrounds and if you play final fantasy 7 you know that all the normal people like live underneath the uh, the city where all the rich people live and it's basically just full of scrap and runoff from uh, the, the huge industry and corporations that are destroying the planet and um, so i thought that that was kind of also a bit fitting considering like the, the state of the natural world today as you can see i've made all of my layers black and white because we're going to put a gradient map over these and kind of really play with the color so i'm really going back here and just kind of playing with brightness and contrast and i'm using my like burn and, and dodge tools and stuff to bring out some details here and there on different layers and honestly if you can get something to look cool in black and white with your contrast and to be clear and stuff then it, it shouldn't really matter what color you put over it now i'm using a really cool font called jupiter that i thought was super final fantasy-esque and uh, i'm just kind of putting in some details of the game um, you know, like Squaresoft Japan released January 31st, 1997 and opted to go with uh, Roman numerals like the uh, the titles of the game themselves. All the while tightening up my layout, you know, just kind of uh, going through my layers, uh, putting like inner shadows on things, different strokes on things. Making sure that like some of my assets and images are going to be like above the frame if you get me and some are below. So I've really just kind of like gone in and like played with like different kind of drop shadows, some white, some black. Making sure that it's really hard though, like I don't like soft shadows that much on things unless it, it's kind of called for. Now you can see I'm playing with some quotes from the game as well, some things that really like kind of stuck out to me quite a lot. So I've, I've uh, used my grid there to kind of like align these like nicely in some of the negative space. But I still at this stage was still feeling it was kind of like lacking something. Yeah, I just start like playing around with the do recompense there. I've used my uh, Stipple Studio, uh, what is it, True Grid Texture Supply Stipple Studio brush. I'll leave a link in the description. And I've destroyed my Siege Engine font there to kind of like make it really seem like it's kind of like gritty and falling apart. Here I'm just uh, duplicating the energy effect off the materia to kind of give it like a bit more like kind of like stuff going on and to fill that kind of negative space nicely. Now usually I wouldn't do this and I've used an actual logo from the game itself. Everything else in this design isn't from the game at all. These are all assets and stock that I've bought legitimately so I can use but I still don't think that I could sell this t-shirt design considering it's like the Final Fantasy IP. Fan art is definitely okay, but like you can't really like monetize or sell this. So I figured it, it was okay, I'm just gonna grab the Avalanche logo. And um, so I just grabbed that quickly, kind of refined the edge and throw it over the design here. So uh, basically I'm just like duplicating my uh, quotes there and kind of inverting the bottom layer and like nudging it down. And uh, using a soft eraser, I just kind of like blend out a bit of the Avalanche logo there, just kind of give it like a little bit more of a 3D effect that it's bursting out. Now I'm just kind of going back more so with my grid and tightening up all my text layers and stuff. And then once I was happy that all of my individual bits and bobs are all kind of like living nicely within their assigned uh, slots in the grid, I merged them all onto one layer and uh, delete the black and then I'm just going in and taking my spearhead grid which you will also find in the uh, assets folder below so Gizmeld like and subscribe for more free assets 
And I'm kind of just like going in and throwing them over my layer. And uh, once I've kind of put like four or five bits of the black grit, I merge that together, duplicate it, invert it, and kind of nudge it slightly so the white grit's kind of like uh, permeating the design as well. Then I basically make a selection of my artwork layer and with refine edge kind of like push it out a bit and then invert my selection and delete the uh, the rest of the grit so the grit's only over the design itself. If you'd like to see this uh, in a little bit more detail I'm gonna leave a little link up there to my Xerox design tutorial. So then I've gone in and just given it a ripple on the rest of the design and merged in my um, grit in with the design itself. Now I have made a selection of my artwork itself and I've gotten rid of all of the outside grit that is unnecessary so we're just keeping the grit on the art itself. Now I've made a selection of that layer, made a new layer and put a gradient map over it. In the presets of gradients here you can get a lot of nice cool stuff like the iridescent ones are great and the, the purples and pinks are great for this kind of style. So I basically went into purples and then just like threw in like a, a nice gradient that's like kind of purple going into red. The purple will be going over the black parts and the red will be going over the white parts if you get me. So all the bits in the middle I wanted to kind of have another color kind of popping out so I opted to go with like an orange here. And once I was kind of happy with uh, the gradient that I put over the design, feeling that like all the colors really bring out the detailed parts of the image itself nicely. So yeah, the gradient kind of stuff is all, it's gonna be down to your eye here. Or if you've seen like kind of a color way that you like on like, you know, could be anything from an advertisement or like another design um, and you want to use it, you can just like drop those colors with your, your hexadecimal codes into the gradients uh, slider there and achieve some really cool kind of uh, visual effects. Once I was happy with this and I've been saving as I go, I was happy with this colorway, I just merged it and rasterized it and uh, merged it onto the same layer as my artwork and then later on I was kind of playing around a bit more with my like hue and saturation sliders to get like a, the desired look that I, that I wanted. But uh, yeah, after you're happy with it, all you really need to do is put like a little bit of noise on it, just to give it like a little bit of a, a, a feathered kind of softer texture. I like monochromatic noise mainly because sometimes I find um, using another uh, or using colored noise it kind of like bumps up the, the file size and when you're working with artwork this size like A3 that'll just make it absolutely huge. And then yeah I just like played around with some of our uh, I used uh, texture fabric uh, photocopy uh, texture and just used like a multiply blend mode over the top and basically wham bam thank you man we're all done. So there you have it, yeah, that was about like maybe say two hours work and maybe, of course, maybe an hour's worth of prep, kind of getting my files and stuff together. But as you can see, it's it's a nice and easy kind of like work process. You're not really having to draw too much stuff from scratch here. A few little gradients and uh, bits of texture in here and there, you know, tricks of the trade with like a nice solid layout, like that's all you need. So like once you've got your concept down and you know what kind of design you're hoping to achieve, it's literally just a matter of playing around either on paper or within Photoshop itself. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. If any, if anybody has any questions on like anything that I did here, like please don't hesitate to give me a little comment below and I'll get back to you or get at us on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And uh, yeah, as usual, the free assets folder is down there below. Uh, go grab that stuff. It's free for personal and commercial, commercial uh, stuff. So yeah, streetwear design done, Final Fantasy job. I'm gonna jump back on the PlayStation here and put another 20 hours into the game. But uh, I hope everybody's happy and healthy and I'll see you all in the next one. Good luck.